Alright everyone, this is Zero Budget Geek, and welcome back to Tales of Berseria. Alright guys, we are continuing our story where we left off last time, and we were looking for, we were hunting some prickle boars, uh, because we need meat to eat, and also to uh, uh, sell at the town so we can make money. Because uh, we need to get medicine for our little brother? Was he our little brother? Oh shit. He almost... Alright, that's interesting. If you position yourself... No, see, right now I am auto-aimed against that one enemy there, but I can position myself to possibly hit them both. Oh god. Alright, now I can block and dodge. And blocking and do dodging uses up um, part of your soul gauge. Is that all? All right. Now, one thing I like about this game is that after each combat, the, uh, there's they usually have some kind of combat quotes or whatever, or really, really small scenes that are kind of interesting. So actually, oh, more, more combat. We might as well fight and get used to the combat. We'll block and let our gauge. Not bad. Um, combat is, I mean, as and it's gonna get more chaotic later when we get more characters. It is really simple. And early game like this, it's gonna be mostly button mashing. Uh, we'll just kind of block there. Fuck you. Is that all? And we've leveled up. Uh, we got something else that I didn't notice what it was. I need to stop pressing. I keep spamming the A button after each uh, combat. Oh, we, we would have. So we went the right way accidentally. Oh, we've got some mushroom. A top of mushroom used in medicine. Valuable enough to be worth gathering. All right. So I actually grabbed that by accident. But. There we go. And we can look into, let's go into our menu real quick just to kind of let you guys be familiar with it. So we can see, uh, this is this is kind of cool. Anything new that we've gotten that we haven't looked at, we will see here. And then here is our consumables. So we have apple gels. And then those are actually divided into smaller categories. Uh, then we have weapons. We have our blood blade. We have accessories, armor, rings, shoes. Uh, materials which I'm not sure what we do yet with those in this game potentities I'm not sure what that is uh, we have some valuables um, I think these are just like quest items and fashion is the cool stuff fashion is where we can actually change up the look of our character so let's uh, can we do anything with that yet no not nothing yet because we don't have any other things to change so That'll be it for now, but we can actually change the look of our character once we've get more costumes and stuff and something's happening here Wait the boars I hunted are you there? Hmm. They're intelligent Maxim three never waver once your sword is drawn control your feelings to control the tide of battle <laughs> All right, battle tutorial. Hidden arts f focus on damage and attack range, but use more of your SG than martial arts. The Searing Edge is effective against beasts. Gain the advantage by exploiting your enemy's weak spots. So Searing Edge is what we want. Select arts from the battle menu and set Searing Edge to A, then press A to use it. Oh, we, we need to change it up. All right, select arts from the battle menu. Uh, her... And which one was it? Searing. Wait. All right. Let's go to A. And we want uh, Searing Edge. But we could change it back to you this size. So let's do Searing Edge. And that's what we want to do. So confirm. Confirm and back. All right. So we want to use A. So we can keep doing that. Let's let's let our soul gauge fill up. So you can't do a combo with just one button. Alright. 
These guys are barely doing anything. Come on, come on, come on. I did it. Oh shit. Cirrus. An exorcist art. Pride and anxiety. Pity for the enemy. Thrill of victory. Your emotions run too hot. That will be your downfall. Oh. Agreed. It's one of her virtues as well. Huh? Yes, I know. But even so, she's got to... Arthur? Arthur's fourth maxim. Never let your guard down, even when victorious. Got it. In any case, this should be enough to buy Lafayette's medicine. <laughs> I'll see. That's plenty there. <laughs> I'll drop the prick of boars off at the shop before I head out. Head out where? The person I was supposed to meet is late. I don't think I'll be home tonight. I came out here to let you know. You'll have to pick up the medicine yourself. Right. One more thing. I saw a group of demons near the village. If you're attacked, run away. Am I clear? No way! I, I can handle a bunch of- <laughs> Demons can only be challenged by those with the talent for exorcism. That's the cold logic of the world, and no emotions can change it. Do you think I could become an exorcist? No. <laughs> Why is it you think that birds fly? Why? Well, without flying, they couldn't find food. It takes a particular innate talent to be an exorcist. Unfortunately, very few humans have it within themselves. All right. Tomorrow is Selica's Memorial Day. I'll be back as soon as I can. Hurry back! I'll make you a quiche, just the way she taught me. Okay, so a couple things of interest there. Um, well, uh, first of all, exorcists in this game world um i believe um they're all about they 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 make sure that they don't have any emotion they believe that that is how they can fight demons better because demons run on emotion now he was hinting at she couldn't really be a good exorcist because she's very she's a very emotional individual so and then the other thing is he was talking to himself but i don't think he was talking to himself in the next game uh tales of zisteria which is the you know the story that happens after this now tales of zisteria happens like a thousand years uh from here so they're not really related to each other however in that game um, it's in the same game world. There were seraphs, a race of seraphs that were treated as if they were divine and only certain people could see them and talk to them. And to most people, it looked like they were just talking to themselves. So I'm wondering if that's just um, uh, something, uh, you know, kind of connecting the games. Also, we have a little skit here. I wonder if those prickle boars were brothers. Maybe I should have let them go. But then how would I pay for Laffy's medicine? Hunting took care of that, and it means food for us as well. I had no other choice. It was a rational decision. But the fact that I'm still worrying about it shows that my feelings are getting the better of me. Yeah, see, so she, she's got a lot of emotion to her, which is important to her character. As we're going to see later on. Like, I don't know... All the exact story elements, but I know I got basic ideas of something. Chipped copper coin, and I think that the you know her emotions are gonna um, dictate a lot of things that happen here and out. Uh, the star is over by the well. well there we go. <laughs> it's it's by the shop. Nico. 
Nico, here for groceries? Yep. And you must have been out hunting. Yeah, it was a good haul. Look at you, Lady Breadwinner. If you were a boy, I think I'd be in love. Good thing I'm a girl. Mm. Mm. Oh, yeah? You ought to do something about your style, then. Uh, yeah. I kind of broke my comb. So get a new one. Sure, I'd like to, but... Hey, mister! How about a sale on combs for the pretty girl? <laughs> huh? Oh, you two need something? I'm fine, Nico. I'm just here to pick up medicine for Lafayette. Oh, Velvet. I already told Arthur, but I'm afraid the medicine hasn't come in yet. What? Why not? Is it because of the demons? Seems like the demon blight's really taking a toll on the city. There's even a group of them lurking around here now. When's it coming, then? I can't say. And I don't know how much it will cost. Oh, no. Ugh. What is wrong with Midgand? I mean, don't they have an army or something? Those guys? The demons already routed them a while back. But we're safe here, right? After all, your brother-in-law's an exorcist. You so sure about that? Arthur can't even use his right hand anymore. <laughs> he doesn't Poor need it, fellow seems... couldn't even protect his own wife and child. Oh, shit. Let me know when the medicine gets in. Uh, uh, of course. For now, here, on the house. Well, what did he give her? The comb? Velvet! You didn't forget, did you? You promised to teach me how to make your special key. You mean for that apprentice animal doctor you had your eye on? You were serious? Beyond serious! Please. This is life or death for me. But I thought your folks weren't keen on the two of you dating. Who cares what people think? <laughs> Talk to the, the hand. The important thing is my feelings. <laughs> I like the way you talk. If I were a boy, I think I'd be in love. Darn right. <laughs> All right. Uh, we got Apple Joe. Okay, well, he so he be gives. Starving by now. I better hurry home. All right. Well, he gave us some healing stuff. Um, we can talk to them again. So why not? Let's talk to the dog. Apparently, there's. Orthy and Russ seem pretty down today. I know. They've been whimpering like this for an hour now. Well, they've always been a bit wimpy. The other day, that kitty Rolo chased both of them up a tree by himself. They're hopeless. Whenever it's thundering out, they both dive into my bed, shivering. Orthy, Russ, shape up. You're Nico's bodyguards, right? Start acting like it. <coughs> They're completely hopeless. Maybe. But they're so cute, so I forgive them. Okay. Now, there's something else you have to tell us, I think. Celica taught you how to make your special quiches, right, Velvet? Yeah, but mine aren't nearly as good as hers. Don't be modest! They're fantastic! Simple, yet elegant. That's because there's a secret in the cheese and the dough. You should try selling them in Taliesin. I'm sure they'd be a hit. We could make them together and take them on the road! <gasps> we could even wear matching uniforms! Would it make more money than hunting Fricklebores? Definitely, maybe! Even more so if you could lighten up a bit in front of the customers. Then it might be worth a try. I do want to buy Laffy a nice heavy winter coat. And Arthur's gloves are in tatters, so he needs new ones. Oh, don't be so boring! I get where you're coming from, but come on! Think big! Dream, Velvet! Dream! Think big? Hmm. No thanks. I want a peaceful life with Laffy and Arthur. That's all. You're impossible. Then again, maybe that's why your quiches taste so darn good. <laughs> well, somehow I think, uh, that the, the, her plan of having a, uh, peaceful life is not gonna really work out. We, we opened that already. Okay, looks like return home. This is what we got to do. So let's go ahead and do that without further ado. And get further into the story and see what's going on. So we couldn't get the medicine for Laffy. Which is no bueno. And 
And as I said, there's heavy story, lots of story for us to delve into. Hi, Selica. I'm back. I can't believe it's been seven years since we lost you. And the baby you carried. Oh, drat. I forgot to bring your princessias. I know how much you, Mom, and Dad all loved those flowers. And I know your child would have too. I'm sorry. I'll pick some from the Cape tomorrow. Yeah. So as we can see, she, you know, again, reinforcing that she is a, you know, very emotional person. She's got a lot of feelings about a lot of things. We got some nutmeg. I don't know what we do with that stuff, but I'm sure it's going to become apparent very soon. Just check and see. If, no, nothing around the corner looks like. All right, let's go in and see Laffy. Oh, here we go. Uh, welcome home, Velvet. You're Luffy, supposed to be in bed. I told you to stay in bed. I was only up for a little. Look, your fever hasn't gone down a bit. Go lie down and I'll cook dinner. I'm sorry. What's this? A compass. It uses a magnet to tell you which way you're facing. Woohoo. You can use the sun and stars for that. <laughs> and what'll you do if it's cloudy, huh? Thanks to this invention, we'll even be able to voyage across the ocean. See? It's designed to stay level. So your heading will be true even when the ship is rolling with the waves. Pretty neat, right? If you say so, Laffy. Come on, it's a must-have for any adventure. Can't you see how useful it is? You can tell me more about it later. Did they hurt you? Not a scratch, and I brought back plenty. I can hear Arthur already. Gosh, Velvet, I think it's time you learned all my secret arts. <clears throat> he isn't coming home tonight, is he? How do you know that? Sarah stopped by and told me. See? Arthur is Moloch? Huh, you really can talk to Malachim, can't you? Yeah, Arthur says I've got exorcist potential. No kidding. I think you'll be an exorcist to rival even him. I can tell you've been learning all sorts of things from his book collection. I really want to become an exorcist. I want to go traveling with you and see all the wonders of the world. I'll hunt and chop firewood, and if demons come for us, I'll defend you. I wish... I wish I could do that. <sighs> You'll get there, Laffy Set. It should only take... Oh, 20 years, tops. Yeah, that's it won't a long take time. me that long. Oh, yeah? You better prove it to me, then. Start with this lovely meatball stew I cooked. Eat every last mouthful, even if you don't feel hungry. And take your medicine, no matter how nasty it tastes. No tricks, am I clear? Yes, ma'am. Right, cooking time. First, I need to light the stove. Okay, we can talk to him again. You might not believe it, but I can do whatever I set my mind to. Haha, <laughs> okay, okay, sure you can. All right. So we got to do some cooking, it seems here. Maybe this is a tutorial about cooking stuff. So where is it? We've got... Okay, there's nothing upstairs. I was facing the wrong way. Oh, wait, there is something up here. Yeah, we'll take that. Some more rock salt. All right, let's drop down. And then, where does it want us to go? Oh, there's stuff here to check. There's some observations on the nameless Empyrean. Isn't this Arthur's book? Is Laffy really reading stuff this dense? <laughs> Poor kid's gonna squint his eyes right out. Hmm. All right, that was one thing. There's something else over here. The day before Scarlet Night. Sis went prickle boar hunting on her own. She's almost as good a fighter as Arthur. So I know those prickle boars don't stand a chance. But I worry that she's too athletic to land a husband. Oh, Maybe shit. she should try to be more ladylike. Little scamp. 
He just knew I'd be reading this, didn't he? <laughs> ah, got caught out there. All right. Oh, we supposed to light this, ignite that. It's so easy to light Arthur's firewood. I wonder what his trick is. Um, Velvet, could you not put any spinach in the stew? Huh? You'll never grow up if you're picky with your food, you know. Mm, I know, but but just for today. <laughs> fine, fine. I'll leave out the spinach just this once, and I'll make it that curry flavor you like. Really? Thanks, Velvet. All There's right. some of Arthur's special curry spice upstairs, isn't there? All right, we gotta do that. I I, I agree with Lafayette said there. I hate spinach. I can't stand it, and I don't want it anywhere near. I can't even stand the smell of it. Oh wait, was there somewhere else? we can cross here? Check. There you go. Not spicy hot, but oh so delicious. Oh yeah, I saw Nico today, and she had very important things to talk about. She's coming over in the next couple days, so be on your best behavior. I will. I'm glad you've got a good friend. Yeah, we've known each other since forever. Still, Nico falling in love? I can barely wrap my head around it. Laffy, you know, if there's a girl you like, you'll tell Big Sister all about it, right? A g girl Hmm, you're a stubborn little brat, so you might need an older girl to keep you under control. Oh, shit. Oh, and she's gotta be a good cook. A pro in the kitchen is a success at life. Knock it off, Velvet! You should be more worried about your own love life. Oh. Me? I I've got enough on my mind. For one thing, I've gotta cook for you and Arthur since Celica is gone. Besides, getting crushes on strange men? I just don't see what's so... <laughs> Luffy, what's wrong? Mm, he's sick. Alright, was we just needed to go there, okay. Why did we need to go all the way up here just to carry a conversation? That's kind of odd. Alright, we need to go check on Luffy. What happened? Are you alright? I'll bring you some water. I'm fine. You just said something funny is all. And it made me choke a bit. <sighs> as long as you're okay. Sorry, I went off on a tangent there. <laughs> Who knows what the future holds? Yeah, but what more can I do? I've got a duty to look after my little brother, and I'm serious about it. I know, but I'm trying to look after you too. I want you to be happy. That's all. And it's not just me. Arthur worries about you too. Well, we're family, right? Yeah, that's what families do. Thanks, Laffy. For you, I'd kill every last prickle boar in the forest if it came down to it. <sighs> oh, what am I doing? I need to hurry and get dinner ready. Yeah, you do. All right. So, does anybody else get the feeling that <laughs> bad things are going to happen very soon? All right. So, let's go ahead and... Wait, where, where do we need to go? Oh, begin cooking there. So another cutscene, or not? There we do. Good boy, you didn't forget your medicine. Well, I did promise. Tomorrow's a scarlet night. Yeah, just like that night that changed our lives. Oh, right, from the intro. Um, Velvet, may I sleep next to you tonight? Of course. So showing how close they are, they care about each other very much. And I guess that's the resting sleeping music there, as all RPGs tend to do. So I guess we're on the next day. <sighs> okay, let's see. Today, I've got to dry some meat and use that cheese I've been saving to make a quiche for... 
It's not here. Where did he go off to? You little, where have you gone? Well, apparently he's feeling better. I guess. Did he you leave any clues? You better not have gone to the village alone. Uh, I bet your fever hasn't even gone down. No, wait a minute. If Velvet sleeps here, and Luffy sleeps there. Oh well, did they share the bed? Is that, is that what they, they were talking about? So I guess uh, the other guy sleeps upstairs, or maybe there's another room there. Uh, let's look. Every time we've gone up here, there's been like an item. No, there isn't. Anyway. But it probably regenerates. Like, just maybe every time we come here, there'll be an item. All right, where'd Luffy go? Nothing over here. All right. Uh, oop, that's not the right way. This is the right way. We gotta find Laffy. Search for Laffy. Probably went into town. Uh, oh, I was gonna say, there he is. Uh, can we talk to whoever's up there? No. We can't even get up there. How did you get up there? We have impassable walls down here. Uh, you guys are talking, hanging out. Where did he go? I guess do we need to just talk to people? I guess let's talk to her and see if she's seen him. What's the big rush, Velvet? Have you seen Laffy? He went out alone, but he still has a fever. Well, we just got here, so we haven't seen him, but Laffy's a boy. Boys do these things. I'm glad one of us can stay calm. What if something's happened to him? Relax. If he's in the village, he's safe. So try thinking about other places he might have gone. Stay calm. You're his big sister, right? Right. All right. So I guess that was worth talking. Oh, well, cutscene. Hey, has Laffy set been here? Uh, no, I haven't seen him. Liar. Wait, that's one of Arthur's. Actually, it's a copy that Laffy set made. <sighs> a smart merchant would pay a pretty penny for this book. I gave him a fair trade. Luffy, did he really copy all that by hand? Mm. Oh, he must have done it to buy that compass. No, though he gave it some puppy eyes. Told him I'd throw it in for free, but he said that it would be a bad deal for me. Huh, really? He's a good lad, but not the merchant type. So... What did he use the money for? I'm afraid my lips are sealed. You'll have to ask him. Why would you keep a secret from a little kid from his Velvet. older sister? I saw Laffy set walking around. Is he okay? He's not okay. Where'd you see him? He was headed for the forest. I'll help you look for him. Thanks. Do a sweep of the village, just in case. I'll check the forest. All right, well, let's hope he didn't get into trouble. Um, well, we've got somebody that wants to talk to us over here. He might have gone to the Cape to pick flowers. Hmm. I all was right. going to have them join the search, but they won't move at all. It's oh, yeah. It's like they're scared of something. Well, there's demons nearby. It was said earlier. It was totally said. All right, let us go to the safe point before we do anything further. And actually, we are running out of time in this episode. So let's go ahead and save things there. And that'll be it for now. So guys, thank you so much for watching. And I will see you soon.